On behalf of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide and in gratitude to their saviors, the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity is awarded to modern-day heroes. The Aurora Humanitarian Initiative is the vision of philanthropists Nubara Feyan, Ruben Vardanian and the late Vartan Gregorian, who have been joined by thousands of supporters and partners. It was launched in New York in 2015 and is based on the universal concept of gratitude in action. An Aurora Prize laureate is annually honored with a $1 million award, which gives the laureate a unique opportunity to continue the cycle of giving by supporting the organizations that help people in need. The mission of the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity is to recognize and support those who risk their lives, health or freedom to save the lives, health or freedom of others suffering as a result of violent conflict, atrocity crimes or other major human rights violations. The Aurora Prize Laureate is selected based on the nominee's demonstration of courage, commitment and impact. Aurora believes that even in the darkest times, a brighter future is in the hands of those who are committed to giving others help and hope. The sixth Aurora Prize ceremony took place on October 9, 2021 on the San Lazaro Island in Venice, one of the world's most prominent centers of Armenian culture and Armenian studies. The guests had an opportunity to learn about the history of the Armenian Catholic Congregation of Mekitarists and tour the Madenadaran, the book repository of San Lazaro. The Chronicles of Aurora modern manuscript, which had been brought to San Lazaro from the Madenadaran in Yerevan, was displayed next to the ancient Armenian manuscripts preserved in San Lazaro. The events began with the meeting of the Aurora Prize Selection Committee, who deliberated on the name of the 2021 laureate. Later, a prayer for solidarity and peace was held in the church of the Armenian Catholic Congregation of Mekitarists. The service was accompanied with performances by the Hover Chamber Choir. The sixth Aurora Prize ceremony was preceded by the In Remembrance, the Aurora co-founder Vartan Gregorian event dedicated to the memory of the outstanding Armenian-American humanitarian and scholar. special prayer service dedicated for peace according to the tradition of the Armenian Church. Armenians know well the value and the importance of peace. It is important and very significant that we begin the 2021 Aurora Humanitarian Initiative Prize Ceremonies with a special prayer service dedicated for peace in this very important spiritual, cultural, and educational center of the Mkhitaris congregation on this Armenian island. May the Lord hear our supplications 
to bring peace in all the regions of the world where there is a need, like especially in nagorno karabakh Let us all pray for peace. Sireli Arazatnir, Tolori Tasni, Mer Siro, Yev Khautyan Vokchuyna. That Lord's blessing may always be with you, be with us, and especially that the patriarch of our Holy Mother, all of our saints whose figures you see here around the greatest and also the most popular Armenian saints, and especially our holy translators, Saint Sahak and Saint Pesrop. Remember, the Armenian church is the only church in the Christian Ecumene who celebrates the feast of the holy translators. And our fathers, without any false modesty, gave a translation of the Bible, the inspired word of God, which has been called by a great, very great French humanist, the queen of translations. And I think that initiatives like Aurora will help us to be and to remain faithful to this great heritage. May the Lord help us and His grace accompany all our steps.
c'est donc ta victoire. Good evening, my dear friend, my dear brother and sister. Welcome to this special emotional event dedicated to celebrate the memory of our dear friend, our brother, our hero, Aurora, co-founder, Vartan Gregorian. I am Marguerite Balankite, founder of Maison Shalom. In 2016, I had the honor of being named the inaugural Aurora Prize laureate. That event changed completely my life. It happened thanks to Aurora, co-founder, who taught us the idea of gratitude in action. That idea creates a better future. It brings forward love compassion, hope. It makes all those survivors say, yes, okay. Now that I got so many good things from others, how can I give back to the world? With his kindness, Vartan was one of the creators of this idea. As co-founder of Aurora and a member of the Aurora Prize Selection Committee, he has worked so much to bring the vision to life and to give a second chance to those who need it. Yes, today we celebrate his life. We believe in his legacy. Vartan was compassionate about education. He was president of New York Public Library for many years and he helped to preserve and develop it. Over the years, the Aurora event were organized in the places with the most amazing libraries in the world. The Matanadaran in Armenia, the New York Public Library, and the San Lazaro island in Venice. They are all connected thanks to Aurora and thanks to Vartan who loved libraries and books. Let us watch a beautiful tribute given to him by members of the, the Aurora Prize Selection Committee at the 2018 Aurora Prize Ceremony, where they, they all read part from Vartan's book, The Road to Home. And now, for all of you, a special surprise that recapitulates the life of a man beloved by all, a life told in chapters by some special friends. From Tabriz, Iran, to New York City, a poor boy yearning for knowledge, a wandering Armenian who ended up on the society pages of the New York Times. This is the life that has been my privilege to lead. Now, as I sit in my office under a portrait of Andrew Carnegie, I am given to reflecting on the long voyage that brought me here. In Lebanon, my first mentor, Simon Varazian, the last prime minister of the short-lived first Republic of Armenia, 
was a surrogate father, teacher, and benevolent benefactor. He became very fond of my wife, Claire, admiring her courage, tenacity, and independence. Many mentors, friends, and strangers have helped and guided me along the way, as well, of course, as my wife and children. I had a great empathy for Carnegie and detected some similarities in our backgrounds. We were both boys from poor families. We both knew in our hearts, in our bones, that education would save us and direct us, that, in fact, education is the key to a better life for everyone, no matter who they are or where they are born. I certainly was proud and felt triumphant that the boy from Tabriz, who was too poor to own his own volumes and was even unable to borrow and rent books, ended up lending millions of books to the people of New York. A book to me is still one of the most extraordinary creation of man because it is a gift of knowledge. A book contains dreams, ideas, and ideals. It contains notion about reality and utopia, about revolutions, and clue about life and freedom and happiness. To construct and cherish a library is to invest not only in ourselves, but in future generations. A library is a legacy. A library is a mirror to the past and a window to the future. Knowledge about the world, both its uh, tangible qualities and its ephemeral mysteries, and about each other, our glories and our follies, is the only way to narrow the great gulfs that divide us. As a young boy in Tabriz, I had read about the terrible devastations wrought by the Great War, including the deportations, atrocities, and genocides perpetrated against the civilian populations. One thing is clear. Peace will be rooted in understanding how the differences between us, between states, between peoples and nations cause conflict, and in finding ways to managing those differences instead of letting them explode into hostilities. Andrew Carnegie himself said that he wanted the philanthropies he had begun to do real and permanent good in this world. I had no money, so I've learned through Carnegie's legacy what is possible to do with money. Give it away. In much the same way I had learned earlier how a boy who had no books could grow up to be a man dedicated to using the resources of many to provide books for millions. And now, with great emotion from all of us, I want to invite our cherished friend and mentor, Vartan Gregorian, to the stage. I would like to ask to Aurora co-founder Nubar and Ruben to please come on stage. Thank you, Maggie. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel a little bit set up having to speak right after that. I feel the spirit of Vartan is here today watching over us, and that's because for many years that I knew Vartan, I always felt he was looking over my shoulder and over the shoulder of all those he cared for. 
What's even more impressive, though, is that through his life's work, Vartan also looked over the shoulders of many thousands, if not millions more, most of whom he never personally knew. Vartan was a guiding light for us. What made him so prominent and influential was simply being Vartan. Many of us consider ourselves more than one thing. But in case of Vartan, I'll propose to you that he was a multiplication of things, which none of us really achieve. He was the multiplication of kindness, compassion, wisdom, commitment, and so much more. He was a global phenomenon and, of course, an Armenian hero. I've traveled the world and I've met many people, but I've never encountered anyone who represented a new standard of what extraordinary meant. He was in his category, the category we will call Vartan. And he set us all a standard in the most humble of ways that we need to strive for as we leverage our learnings from him throughout our lives. To me, one of the most memorable things that Vartan said is during an interview when he was asked what he had done to become so powerful. His answer was, and those of you who have not met him in person, he was a relatively short-statured man, highly unassuming in appearance. He said, I've never been interested in power, but I am interested in knowledge. And it happens that knowledge is power. We're gathered today in a bastion of knowledge that contains historic records of the Armenian culture and heritage. And that is a reflection of the power Vartan Gregorian was talking about. The power that we all have, the power we must use to do good. Today, I'd like to think that each of us who met Vartan has brought a piece of Vartan's spirit to Venice, a city of many names, La Serenissima, the Serene, La Dominante. And if you just think about the same place being the most serene and the most dominant, you have a pretty good picture of Vartan. And my only comment is, may his, may his spirit rest in peace here. As Nubar said, Vartan was guiding light and mentor for all of us, <clears throat> for my family. Even after some time, I don't think we have fully realized Skilova, this loss. I think it's just not enough time went. But today we are remembering his legacy with gratitude. We are privileged to work with him and to tell him how grateful we are for the in his input of the Aurora Humanitarian Movement, which he started from first day working with us. He did many projects in his life, like Nubar said, but it's only one movement, institution, where he was co-founder and he put his name like co-founder. He was Aurora. It means a lot for him. He was a very kind person, but at the same time he was the person who been always <clears throat> very cautious about the reputation, and he made <clears throat> so much contribution to Aurora. Passed unexpectedly. We, he was preparing a New York event, and I remember how ma many days and hours he spent trying to prepare New York event last year. Unfortunately, pandemic <clears throat> not allowed us to have a offline event. He was dreaming what he will finish this year his job in Carnegie Corporation, and will move to Armenia. And he will join the board of school in Dilijan. He will open the libraries in Armenia, and he will do everything is possible to make Armenia great again. And uh, Vartan unfortunately couldn't do it, but we must continue his legacy. We must continue what he passed to all of us: the kindness and the vision, and desire desire to work many many hours to make the world better. And when he was Preparing this event in New York, he asked one of his friends, he has a fantastic, so many friends, so many people told me many, many times that Vartan is his closest friend. And he asked one of the most famous cellists, Yo-Yo Ma, to make special performance in behalf of the <coughs> event which was planning to be in New York. And today, uh, let's watch again this um,
performance, which I think was very emotional. And we always will remember Vartan in our hearts and will stay with him. All we've we'll been doing for the next many, many years. Good evening. My name is Yo-Yo Ma, and it is a great honor for me to be here tonight with you. For me, there's nothing more enjoyable than to be present at an organization that wants to celebrate the good work of others, giving hope for a better society. Tonight, the music I'm playing for you, I'd like to personally dedicate to Vartan Gregorian. He is to me, first and foremost, a scholar, a deep thinker, and a very wise human being. I first met Vartan at the very beginning of the Silk Road project. I was introduced to him and I was amazed by his fluency in Persian, Arabic, Christian, and Hebraic cultures. He opened new worlds to me that day. For that, I'd like to dedicate a piece of music that honors all of the diaspora of Armenians around the world. Karunk, crane, means something very special because it represents a mix of sorrow and hope. I believe that it's that mixture Vartan, that has given you a lot of your wisdom. And it is the hope that we have today combined with the sorrow also that is happening right now, as well as over a hundred years ago, that we want to have soar and to bring us into a better world.
It was indeed a beautiful performance. Thank you, Nuba. Thank you, Ruben. Let us welcome on stage Rod Ara Darcy, Chair of Aurora Prize Selection Committee, and Mary Robinson, member of Aurora Prize Selection Committee and former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Thank you, Marguerite. I had the honor of working with Vartan on the Aurora Prize Selection Committee. He cared deeply about others. He believed passionately that we need to give an opportunity and a chance to everyone. And that's the spirit that he brought to the Aurora Prize Selection Committee. Having someone like him being part of the prize was a very unique experience, not just for me and the co-founders, but also to our fellow committee members. When Vartan spoke, we always listened to his advice, and the world became a better place for it. He was passionate about the cause he supported. He was authentic. He was selfless. He was generous to many. His infectious smile and the twinkle in his eyes made him a superb member of the selection committee. The work we do can be quite taxing at times, but Vartan brought lightness and a sense of optimism to the hardest parts of it. I've learned a lot, a lot watching him in action for the number of years that I had the privilege of being with him as the chair. And every time we have a selection committee meeting, every time we're facing a tough decision, I'm asking myself, what would Vartan would have done? I could still, still hear him whispering in my ear, even today. Thank you. I'm sure he does still whisper to you. That would be such a Vartan thing to do. First, I'd like to say that I'm so impressed by how Aurora, his passion, his passion project has grown. I think that for Varta, that was one of the most important things, to make sure that he encourages people to say, what can I do? How can I change things? This is my responsibility, and I feel more empowered because of Aurora to do this. Change happens with extraordinary people making a conscious decision to achieve it and to be committed to it. I'm honored to have been able to call one of these people my dear, dear friend. As Ara, Lord Darcy said, it was Barton's moral compass that drove the extraordinary values in that prize. And they are very well thought out, as you know. And he had not only a very ambitious vision for it, but also a crystal clear understanding of the power of gratitude in action. He didn't simply believe that it had no limits. He knew that for sure. Generosity has no expiration date. Vartan used to say. Sometimes he'd put it slightly differently. Generosity has no sell-by date. But we all knew, knew what he meant, and that was Vartan. I remember him talking about it in 2018 at the breathtaking sunrise ceremony in Armenia, in Kor Virap. Vartan was telling us the story of eternal hope, of the light that always comes, however dark the night. Let's watch him now. For thousands of years, there has always been sunrise. 
not only here, but around the world. There's always been good day anticipated with every sunrise. But the most important thing for us here, bringing symbolic unity of peace tradition to Armenians. One was before Christianity, when we worshiped the light and fire, along with Zoroastrians and others. Second is with Christianity, when we celebrated eternity and suffering as a way of redemption to heaven, a redemption, Golgotha having a cause and a meaning. And the third one, most important, resurrection. And you saw the transformation in the back, how from the fires and others came calm, and with calm came light. People all over the world, when there is a light, we say good morning. Armenians say Parilus, good light. And that has been traditionally our hope that one day we'll have good light, not for every day, for some time in order to reconstitute ourselves, the nation we were. I would like to ask Archbishop Barsamian to lead us for a prayer for Vartan Sor to find eternal peace. Dr. Vartan Gregorian, being internationally well-respected scholar, educator, and a leader, he was indeed a wonderful son, dedicated son of the Armenian Church. And I remember how on several occasions we spoke about this island, this Armenian island, Isola di San Lazaro degli Armeni. He valued very much the wonderful work which Mkhitaryan's fathers has done during this past 300 years. So it's so wonderful that when we are gathered here to celebrate Aurora Prize, we are remembering the co-founder, Dr. Vartan Gregorian. Just about two, three weeks before Vartan passed away, it was St. Vartanath's Day, his name day. So every year I called him. And again, during the conversation at the end, he said, Sirpazan, agote in zihamar, pray for me. So now we are gathered, not only me, all of us pray for the soul of Dr. Vartan Gregorian, that our Lord receives the soul of this intellectual great figure, hero, not only Armenian people, but internationally respected human being. And also let us pray that his spirit will be the guiding spirit of young generation of Armenians as well as non-Armenians. Let us pray. Dervogormia, Dervogormia, Dervogormia. Christos vorti astuzo, anohagal ye parekut, kata ko ararchagan si rovat, ihokis ankutsial zaraitskots. Ye manavant der, hisha soki ankutsial vartan gregoriani, hisha havur mezikalas den arkayutyanko, ararjani vogormutian, kavutian ye togutian megats. Tasavoria and Surpusco Achigomian Tasun, Zituyes Ter Yep Ararich Amenetsun, Tadavor Gentaniats Yemerelots, Yevkezvaele Park, Ishanutun Ye Badiv, Ajum Ye Mish, Yev Avidianus, Avidenitz, Amen.
Hello, dear friends. I'm David Ignatius, and I'm very excited to greet you all here in the magnificent, windy city of Venice and on San Lazaro Island, a cherished place for all Armenians. Hello, Venice. I'm Dalia Atallah, and I will be your host tonight together with David. We are honored to have you all here with us tonight. In times like these, it's important for us to remember the things that give us strength and to find inspiration and in shared experiences that bring us closer. We would like to begin this ceremony with a video that conveys the Armenian story. Showing it has always been a tradition for Aurora, so let's watch it now. Armenia, the land of Noah. For millennia, Armenians created an ancient civilization of builders, healers, scientists, and storytellers at the crossroads of world cultures. They survived conquests and empires, contributed to trade, art, literature, and science, becoming a truly global people. In 1915, under the cover of the Great War, one and a half million Armenians perished from their ancient homeland, along with their culture and way of life. This was a genocide perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire against its own citizens. Across the four corners of the globe, men, women, and children fled, seeking shelter and a life of peace. They were determined and resilient. The fortunate ones were saved by unsung heroes who risked their lives. Among the saved children was Aurora Martiganyan, an orphaned 17-year-old survivor of the atrocities. She became the star of Ravished Armenia, the first major motion picture produced in Hollywood about the genocide. Based on her autobiography, Aurora was cast in the starring role, reenacting the trauma of her young life and telling the story of her people. The film premiered to sold out audiences in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and more than 100 cities across the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and Australia. Aurora's autobiography sold several hundreds of thousands of copies. She became an international phenomenon during the silent film era, a symbol of survival, goodwill, and the devastation of the genocide. She was the icon of philanthropic aid for the survivors. In 1919, the monumental success of ravished Armenia raised international awareness and $30 million for 60,000 orphans in the Near East. To this day, Aurora remains a testament to the living memory of the genocide and the gratitude of the Armenian people to their saviors. True to her name, Aurora became the symbol of light and hope for an entire generation. Those who survived and resisted the genocide, like Aurora, were scattered around the world and persevered. They rebuilt their lives and communities with dignity, ever grateful to the Samaritans who rescued their families. Men and women like Jacob Kunzler, Bodil Bjorn, Maria Jacobson, Fritjof Nansen, and so many others put their lives at risk to heal and protect the refugees and survivors. The world today faces man-made disasters not unlike those of a century ago. Every day, heroes worldwide answer the call of human duty. These rare and brave men and women are among us. They are our neighbors. 
They are the strangers on the streets we pass. They work in the far corners of the world, saving lives with open hearts. On behalf of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide, and in gratitude to their saviors, the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity honors the power of the human spirit that compels action in the face of adversity. Anyone, anywhere in the world is eligible for the prize. We salute those who dedicate their lives to enabling others to live and make a difference. When we talk about the terrible Armenian genocide that caught so many of our families, Nubar Afeyan, one of the Aurora co-founders, sometimes asks people if they know what the antonym of genocide is. Very good question to which few people know the answer. Luckily, Nubar is here and he can explain his powerful idea. Nubar. We would like to invite Aurora co-founder, Dr. Nubar Afeyan, founder and CEO of Flagship Pioneering, to join us on stage now. During his 35-year career, Dr. Afeyan co-founded and helped build over 70 startups, including the one that has created the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Please welcome Nubar Afeyan. Good evening, dear friends. Thank you, David. And Dalia, we, I get asked this question once in a while because I once did mention this notion of what the antonym of genocide would be. So let me give you a couple of thoughts on how it relates to today. I'm a scientist, and I know that we have numerous tools to improve lives at our disposal. And seeing Aurora's progress over the years, I feel immense pride in being part of this endeavor launched on behalf of the survivors of the Armenian Genocide, adding gratitude to their saviors. My message today is meant in the context of where we are gathered, a Venetian island that is home to a place of worship, a community of service, and a repository of a rich Armenian heritage safeguarded from persecution for centuries. More than a century ago, many Armenians who received help in the darkest hour were able to not only survive, but over the years revive and eventually thrive with the help of others. And then they began to lend a helping hand to all who needed it. When I asked the question, how do you reverse a genocide? The immediate answer is that you can't. And that is partly true. You cannot bring back the victims to life. So there is no antonym to the word genocide, any more than there's an antonym to the word death. Birth is not the antonym of the word death. It seems irreversible. On the other hand, victims and criminals are not the only participants in a genocide. As we often discuss within the context of Aurora, such mass atrocities also involve survivors and their saviors. And that's often overlooked. So one way we can counteract the effects of a genocide is to maximize the resources and gratitude provided to the saviors while also helping survivors overcome their trauma to become revived. You cannot bring back the one and a half million people who died at the orders of the rulers of the Ottoman Empire, but we can revive and showcase our excellence in culture, education, medicine, law, architecture, and science. Most importantly, we can change the narrative by completing our transformation from a victim forever trapped in the survival mentality into someone who supports and empowers others. That's the final stage. That is the revival that I see as the antonym of genocide. And that is what Aurora has been doing during the past six years. We gather on the San Lazaro Island to honor modern day heroes and members of the Aurora global community and their work improving the lives of people across the globe. They are able to do that work because they believe in it and they believe in themselves. They also believe in a better future for everybody 
And that is the belief of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. We share that all wholeheartedly. Faith in a better future, or as the Bible verse puts it, hope in the unseen, is something I associate with a very Armenian ritual of baptism. At the moment when the priest asks the Godfather what the baptized child wants, and the answer in our faith is faith, hope, love, and baptism. The story of Christ and the expectation of his return is a profound invitation to have faith in possibility, to work towards a better future and making impossible things, seemingly impossible things, possible. Without belief and without faith, it is hard to leap, to innovate, to imagine better for our shared humanity and to have impact. There's a lesson to be learned here. We cannot remain indifferent to the suffering of others. We cannot afford to not have faith in what we can make possible together. It is within our power to create an awareness and a belief in a more attractive future, a more prosperous, secure, sustainable world for everyone that can be created. As an immigrant, I worked hard to get to where I am today, but I always knew it was possible. However, it's altogether a different force and a different level of sacrifice to create a better world for all humanity to revive and to prosper. It's going to take all of us to build the future we want and not to be trapped in the present or the past. But the fact that we're all here today proves that that's possible. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Afeyan. A descendant of genocide survivor, you have established a biotech company that created a safe and efficient COVID-19 vaccine that is saving lives today. This is a great example of what the cycle of giving can achieve. It's my pleasure to introduce now a very special performer, the Hover Choir from Armenia, conducted by Sona Hovanisyan and famous for promoting the Armenian choral heritage throughout the world. This is music for the soul. The folk song they will sing reminds us every new day is a great opportunity when you're doing what you love. I'm sure you will enjoy their performance. Dahlia, my friend and co-host, 
couple of years ago, you received Aurora's Amal Clooney Scholarship that's given to a female student from Lebanon to enroll in a two-year baccalaureate program at UWC Dilijan, the International School of Armenia founded by Ruben Vardanian and his wife Veronica Zonabend and their co-founding partners, Nubara Fayan and Anna Fayan. The Aurora family is so proud of what you're accomplishing, Dahlia. Thank you, David. I'm forever grateful to Aurora for that scholarship and that opportunity. My biggest dream now and today is to be able to give back and help others. Speaking of giving back, the cycle of giving is, of course, one of the key concepts that drives the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. Gratitude in Action tells us that countless people around the world who have received aid in time of crisis can best express their gratitude by offering similar assistance to someone else. Aurora empowers modern day heroes putting themselves at risk to help others. This kind of support is very impactful because it snowballs to expand the circle of saviors and most importantly, the number of those saved. A name that instantly comes to mind is that of American Dr. Tom Katina, 2017 Aurora Prize Laureate and Chair of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. A Catholic missionary from Amsterdam, New York, he left the States to dedicate himself to treating the 500,000 population of the Nuba Mountains in Sudan. Unfortunately, the amazing Dr. Tom, who we all admire so much, couldn't be here today but he sent a message. Let's take a look at the screen. Hi everybody, this is Dr. Tom Katina. I'm the uh, chair of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative, a former Aurora uh, laureate from 2017, and the medical director at the Mother Mercy Hospital in Sudan's Numa Mountains. Um, I wanna welcome you all to this ceremony. It's with great regret that I can't be with you, uh, but due to a host of unforeseen circumstances, can't make it this year. We're here to honor the uh, 2021 Aurora Humanitarians. And these are people of uh, usually great humility and great courage who often take risks themselves to help others. And I think, especially in light of our seeming 24 seven negative news cycle, let's take this uh, chance uh, to see this as an antidote to the seeming worldwide uh, symptom of despair and cynicism that has enveloped us all uh, and say thank you to these humanitarians. Thank you to Aurora. Uh, thank you to the co-founders, Ruben Vardanian and Nubar Afeyan and the late great Vartan Gregorian. Uh, thanks to all, thanks to the staff of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative for putting on this wonderful function. Um, so until we meet again, uh, God bless you all. Since its inception, Aurora has brought together countless supporters and shed light on the work of exceptional individuals, ensuring a brighter future for all. Their important work that the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative makes possible continues across the globe, and we thank its supporters from all over the world from the bottom of our hearts. For six years, Aurora has been particularly fortunate to receive generous support from several outstanding philanthropists from across the globe, the members of the Founders Circle. It's an honor for us to show you all their names and to recognize their invaluable contribution tonight. Your compassion helps Aurora help others, and we are honored so many of you are here with us tonight. Thank you. And this is, of course, a very special place. In 2021, Venice celebrates its anniversary. It turns 1,600 years old. In this historic center of art, trade, culture, and philanthropy, local benefactors have for centuries supported artists that created masterpieces of outstanding beauty and value. Contributing to the preservation of Armenian culture and history is also one of the important goals of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative. Back in 2015, the founders provided support for the Armenity Project that won the Golden Lion 
at the 56th Biennale de Venezia, an exhibition that took place here on San Lazaro Island honored Armenia's spirit, as well as its perseverance and the global spread of its culture and people. It also paid tribute to the San Lazaro Island itself, one of the world's most prominent centers of Armenian culture and Armenian studies. The island has been home to the monastery of the Mechitarists, an Armenian Catholic congregation, since 1717, when the Republic of Venice gifted it to the order that had been founded by Abbot Mechidar of Sebas. You know, Dahlia, I have a very personal story about San Lazaro. Many years ago, when I was a ragged, and I mean ragged, college graduate in my 20s, I came to Venice and took a vaporetto to this island. A skeptical monk came out on the dock toward me. I said, I'm David Ignatius. He looked at me and asked, was your grandfather Hofsep? I said, yes. Then he asked, is your father Paul? Again, I said, yes. He finally said, you are welcome. In my memory, he added, we have been waiting for you. <laughs> we never lose our Armenian identity. We are remembered even when we forget. So this legacy and memory persisting over time, the kind of national and extranational aspect of Armenian life that San Lazaro represents is very special. And when it comes to memories, I think many of us have a special one connected to the enchanting sounds of the duduk. We are honored to have with us Jivan Kasparian, Jr., a master of this ancient Armenian woodwind in instrument. He has always been inspired by folk melodies performed by his grandfather, the legendary Jivan Gasparian. So please welcome Jivan Gasparian, Jr. and the Hover Choir. They'll perform a lovely lyrical song for us.
The mission of the Aurora Prize for Awakening Humanity is to recognize and support those who put themselves at risk to save the lives, health, or freedom of others suffering as a result of violent conflict and atrocities. Every year, the selection committee decides who will be named the Aurora Prize Laureate. The committee is a group of outstanding individuals whose contribution is key to making sure Aurora's helping hand is able to reach those who need it most. Here are the esteemed members of the committee. Shireen Abadi from Iran, Nobel Laureate and founder of Defenders of Human Rights Center. Leyma Gabawi from Liberia, Nobel Laureate and president of the Gabawi Peace Foundation, Africa. Hina Jalani from Pakistan, former UN Special Representative of the Secretary General on Human Rights Defenders. Bernard Kouchner from France, co-founder of Médecins Sans Frontières. Dele Olegde from Nigeria, journalist, writer, winner of the Pulitzer Prize. Paul Pullman from Netherlands, co-founder and chair of Imagine. John Pendergast from the United States, co-founder of The Century. Mary Robinson from Ireland, former president of her country and former UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. Ernesto Zedillo from Mexico, former president of his country and director of the Yale Center for the Study of Globalization. The committee is chaired by the co-director of the Institute of Global Health Innovation at Imperial College London, Lord Ara Darcy. The selection committee's honorary members include two-time president of Costa Rica, Oscar Arias, artistic and general director of Mariinsky Theater, Valery Gergiev, and president emeritus of the International Crisis Group, Gareth Evans, peace and human rights activist, Benjamin Ferenc and Academy Award winning actor and humanitarian George Clooney are the committee's honorary co-chairs. We also honor the memory of the first co-chair of the committee, world famous humanitarian Eli Wiesel, and committee member Vartan Gregorian, one of Aurora's co-founders. Although they passed away, their legacy lives on. It is my honor to invite to the stage the Aurora Prize Selection Committee member, Leigh Magbawi, Liberian peace activist and Nobel laureate. Hello, Venus. I am humbled to stand on this stage on behalf of all the members of the Aurora Prize Selection Committee. One thing I love most about this prize is the part about awakening humanity. We need that, right? This has always been on my mind, the need for humanity to rise. When good people refuse to act, bad people take over our societies. The Aurora Prize helps us mobilize more people for good. And I am so proud to be a part of it. And now, let me introduce you all to the 2021 Aurora Prize Humanitarians. Please, as I call your name, come on stage. Gregory Ohobono Benin, founder of the Sin Camille Association, which helps people in West Africa suffering from mental illness and seeks to end the inhumane practice of keeping them in chains. Let's give it up for Gregory. Ruby Alba Castano, Colombia, a human rights activist and founder of the association that protects the rights of thousands of Colombians, persons subjected to persecution, forced disappearances, and displacement. Let's give it up some more for Ruby. The more you clap, the warmer you get. Paul Farmer, USA, a medical anthropologist, professor at Harvard Medical School, co-founder and chief strategist of Partners in Health, an international nonprofit organization that brings the benefit of modern medicine to science to those who need it the most. Let's give it up for Paul some more. <laughs> Julianne Lesenge, Democratic Republic of Congo, a human rights defender, co-founder of Women's Solidarity for Inclusive Peace 
and development and fun for Congolese women who has been helping the victims of wartime sexual violence for years. Unfortunately for us, 2021 Aurora Humanitarian Axra Moheram from Yemen couldn't be with us tonight, but we can still give it up to, for her. We honor this physician who provides life-saving support to the starving population of Houdida facing a humanitarian crisis in the aftermath of conflict and the blockade. We are also grateful today to EY, the independent observer of the Aurora Prize that's been helping us give this recognition to all the Aurora humanitarians by monitoring the selection process all the way from the nominations period to the laureate announcement since 2015. Thank you for your help. And now we would like to invite on stage Lord Ara Darzi, Chair of Aurora Prize Selection Committee, Co-Director of the Institute of Global Health Innovation at Imperial College London. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank our co-founders for giving us this amazing opportunity to recognize and celebrate our unsung heroes that you've seen this evening. I'll also like to thank all the Aurora supporters without whom the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative could never have achieved what it is today. I also extend my heartfelt congratulations to all of the 2021 Aurora Humanitarians. You've demonstrated an exceptional courage, commitment and impact. You embody the spirit of the Aurora Prize and our philosophy of the gratitude in action. And we are delighted with this opportunity to express our deepest admiration and appreciation to you for the amazing work you do. Thank you and very much look forward to seeing the winner. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Darcy. Over the years, the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative has developed many beautiful traditions to honor these extraordinary humanitarians whom Aurora is honored to support. Just as a century ago, the world helped another Aurora, the woman behind the prize. Aurora Mardiganian, born Archelois Martikian, was known as a symbol of survival and redemption a woman who lived through the atrocities of the Armenian genocide perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire and then heroically relived those horrors for the world to know the truth. Aurora also means dawn, Arshalwis in Armenian, which stands for hope. And one of our traditions is inviting a girl with the same name to the ceremony where she presents a grapevine stem to the laureate. This year, we found our Aurora here in Venice. And the fact that we did that is very symbolic. This tradition reflects the light of kindness and humanity that Aurora Mardiganian has spread through her life and after. And she brought this light to us today through her little Venetian namesake. Our Venetian Aurora is just eight years old. More than anything, she loves spending summer days on the sailing boat with her older brother and sister. She will join us in a moment to give the vine to the 2021 Aurora Prize Laureate, who will then plant it in a garden on the San Lazzaro Island as a symbol of revival and connection. 
please welcome Aurora Getso from Venice. So, dear Aurora, please tell us the name of the 2021 Aurora Prize Laureate. Julian Lusenge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for Julien Lusenge, 2021 Aurora Prize Laureate. Dear, dear Julien, could we ask you to say a few words now as the 2021 Aurora Prize Laureate? Au nom de toutes les femmes congolaises, au nom de toutes ces femmes qui souffrent chaque jour dans mon pays, je voudrais vraiment vous remercier. Je voudrais vraiment vous remercier parce que vous avez prouvé que même si on traverse les souffrances, on peut encore poser des bonnes actes, des bonnes actions, des bonnes actions pour les autres personnes qui souffrent dans le monde. Vous m'avez donné un message que même à travers les souffrances, on peut toujours transmettre, on peut toujours transmettre des bonnes actions. On peut toujours soutenir les autres qui souffrent. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci. Cher Julien, vraiment, vous êtes une inspiration à nous tous. And we thank all of you for that moving speech and the idea that suffering um, is transcendent. I would say for all of you that you give me a message. This prize is for all Congolese women. I'm here in the name of all Congolese women, all Congolese victims, all Congolese children, all Congolese people who are dying every day, who are raped every day. You give me a message that even if we are suffer. We need to give a good message. We need to support. We need to, to build peace. We need to continue to fight violence in our country, in our continent, and in, in the world. Thank you so much. I'm, I have emotional because I work many years, many years ago. I said, thank you for all. <laughs> thank you.
Thank you, Julien. You move us all so much with your work and your emotion um, and the way in which you give meaning to the idea of gratitude in action. Every year, in order to honor the Aurora humanitarians like Julien, their names and stories are inscribed in the Chronicles of Aurora, a unique modern manuscript created with ancient Armenian techniques and materials. The Chronicles of Aurora contain the depictions of the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative's activities. In 2021, for the first time since its creation, the Chronicles of Aurora left the walls of the Matenadaran, the National Archive of Ancient Manuscripts in Yerevan, Armenia, and was brought to the San Lazaro Island where the name of the 2021 Aurora Prize Royate, Julien Visenge, will be added to it right after the ceremony. What a beautiful connection, since this is one of the world's most prominent centers of Armenian culture, the first Armenian book was printed in 1512 in Venice, which makes us cherish this place even more. And now we're delighted and honored to turn the floor over to my friend, Aurora co-founder, social entrepreneur, and philanthropist, Ruben Vardanyan, a dedicated impact investor. Ruben is best known for his numerous and large-scale social development programs in Armenia and globally. He is a man who embodies gratitude in action. God bless you, Ruben. Thank you, David. Thank you, Daniel. <clears throat> so emotional, so difficult to speak. And I hope you will forgive me, uh, but I want to speak in Armenian. And uh, not because I don't speak very good English, but I want to say a message to the entire old nation who uh, will watch this <coughs> ceremony in Armenia. We have a tough year last year for Armenians. It was a lot of loss of the young people who died during the war from both sides, by the way, not only from Armenian side. And it was horrible for all of us. And I think it's very symbolic where today here in a place where really we can be proud being Armenian around the world, giving something to the world, but also trying to keep our identity, trying to keep who we are. Jesus and Masem were Janet's shot, Ms. Dervart's neighbor, Meng Abru Meng. Mary Apagan, Gaia Temeng, Iskapes, Garohanu Meng, Anna Iltens, were at Apagan, Paluna Lelu, Wostein Shomeki of Nutsam, Wostein Shomeki, Ajak Sam, Almer Kamkov. Yes, was time where I serve Shat Karavor in Stomaburu Yamar, which is Aruma. Suda Dalis made Uja, where Chinayats and Savo make up and Kauta Raj come and Savo will make up and make him a main car and Kaktarek Benak making Kneres and Lilov and Kalere were pity only marked with Havatumayan, Havatumayas in Havatumaya Yegelatsun. Aranz dea voce i bani cei stații, aranz Havatki, aranz Uisiev, aranz nici uiază de nubare, serii voce i bani cei stații. Instrumă amenea care vor, vor mea tăsăr, mea găsăr patmuțunere, tarberi martcanți, vor echele în tarberi că neriți, vor așcarul șat an artar banerea că dar vom. Mănc ce înc Havat un șat banerin, mănc corțele în Havat că e vdea mes șată tureați num. Am agurit că s-a șat mes hântir că vor tăi haere, Tarbe așcari te gărum, mi comiți parte în ghiușe, vor ai să te gărum, Gabriela Ivazovski, Ivazovski, Ahpere, Stefan de Spaner, Hiv, Bayrona, Hainena, Sovere, Bați Mius Comiț, Menk et Amin, ce tot omenk, vor te menk, ce nu-i nu-i vor, Hisherov, Anțeală, Naeng, Apagain, Urize, Voște, Naeng, e Husul, Naeng, ce menk, mi-am mai banca, ne bați, Apagam, Menk, Garuțeng, e Menk, Tereng, Mer, Apagai, e Apaganka menak în zamana care fordu pădăs chanțuiesc cu apagaia mari. Instrumă așchare, zvercine cu tarum tesaf, șat ahavor, căci nașam, voște vorte, vici cam mart mațaf. Vici cam arac, amenci poxvete, vici cam arac. Menk, ascăne cu menk menak, menatze am menk asirea, tânam anadov. Ievaran zilet mi anadov, 
առանց իրար հանգելու, առանց իրար սելու, առանց իրար հետ փորձելու, ինչ որ բան փոխել, ոչ մի բան չի ստացվելու։ Ես վստահ եմ, որ մենք որպես հայաց կարանք լարանք օրինակ այդ համագործակցության ոչ ոսնելով աշխարհի մեջ եւ ես կազին որ նրա կարծել է վանք 300 տարի առաջ օրինակ եւ որ մենք կարողանում ենք պահպանենք մեր ինքնությունը, մեր հայ աշխարհները եւ աշխարհի մեջ ընկերելով դառնալով աշխարհի մի մաս։ Դա ինստում է մեր ուժնա, որ մենք պետք է օտագործենք եւ շարունակենք այդ ճանապարհը, չնայած շատ դժվարությունների։ Ես վստահ եմ, որ այսօր այս ինչ ազարում եմ ես ավելի ուժ կրտա գնալ առաջ, չնայած բոլոր ծանր իրադուրցնից։ Եվ ես վստահ եմ, որ մեր ապագան փայլուն է լինելու։ Եվ ես ուզում եմ շնորհակալություն ասեմ ձեր բոլորին աջակցության համար, որտեղ մենք այդ միասին եկել ամեն չարել։ I want to say thank you for all of you for support, for trust and for all we're doing together. I believe our bright future, I believe the future of the world only will be if we can come together. We really will pass all the difficulties only we trust, we love and we go collegially. Thank you. And I'm David Ignatius. We would like to give special thanks to the Congregation of Mectarists of San Lazaro for welcoming us to this beautiful island. It's an honor for Aurora to support their library here in everlasting memory of Vartan Gregorian with a grant. And now let the bells ring. Let the bells of San Lazaro Monastery ring as a sign of the humanity that is awakened tonight and always by the Aurora Prize. <laughs> 